Welcome to Lab N5. This lab deals with conservation of momentum and projectile motion. Let's now launch the ball across the room. Are you guys ready? Okay. There you go. So the ball was launched made its first pitch and went across the room. In order to describe projectile motion, we need two dimensions. We need the y-axis and we need the x-axis. The y-axis represents the height of the ball from the ground and the x-axis represents the distance traversed by the ball as it is shot out of the straight line. We measure the point at which the ball first makes impact with the ground, the first pitch of the ball. This gives us the horizontal range of the spring line. We then measure the height of the ball from the ground before it is launched. Once the ball is launched, we know that there is a constant acceleration of gravity acting on the ball. So what is the mystery quantity? What aspect or property of the ball do we not know initially or cannot be measured directly? That is the velocity. Let's get ready to experiment. For this experiment, the apparatus consists of a spring gun, a ball, protractor, and a platform with leveling screws. The ball sits on the shaft of the spring gun. In order to charge the spring gun, we'll need to compress the spring gun. And this is going to take considerable force. Push the ball towards the spring gun until you hear the click of the trigger. Now, make sure that the platform is level. I will show you how shortly. You're now ready to launch the ball. Let us now launch the ball once again. The ball made impact on the paper. And as you can see, it leaves a mark that can be easily measured. Once we measure the height of the ball before launch, we can get the time at which the ball makes its first pitch. So the height is nothing but half g t squared. Since the initial velocity is zero, we just have one term, that's the acceleration term of gravity. We measure the time at which the ball takes to make its first pitch by solving this formula for t. And it derives itself to be square root of 2 times the height of the ball divided by g. Once we know the time that it takes to make the first pitch, we can then calculate the velocity with which the ball is launched from the spring gun. So velocity times time in the x direction will give you the horizontal range of the spring gun. We can derive the velocity as the horizontal range times the square root of angular unit gravity divided by 2h, where h represents the height of the initial launch. In order to measure the horizontal range, you will need to tape a piece of paper to the ground. When the ball pitches on the paper, it leaves a mark. 
giving you the exact point of the first pitch. It may take a couple of tries for you to position the paper correctly on the floor. In order to measure the starting point of measuring the horizontal range, you will need a plumb bob. Notice how I have looped the string around the plumb bob through the center hole and tied it firmly. Leave sufficient length of the string so that you receive the optimal height for you to measure the starting point of measuring the horizontal range. Slowly lower the plumb bob from the launch point all the way down to the floor. On to the next part of the experiment, preservation of momentum. In this experiment, you will use a spring gun, the same spring gun that you use for projectile motion, to shoot the ball into a metal cylinder called a catcher. The ball embeds itself inside the catcher and also imparts momentum to the catcher and the ball system. This causes the catcher and the ball to swing like a pendulum and thus gaining a height from its initial position. Firing the ball into the catcher is as simple as pushing this trigger. Make sure to align the catcher with the ball and press the trigger. However, a slightly tricky part of the experiment is to take the measurement. Notice the angle that the rear wire makes initially with the protractor. As the catcher deflects, we can make measurements of the angle of deflection from its initial point. Let us now fire the ball into the catcher. The height to which the pendulum rises can be calculated using the length of the pendulum and the angle of deflection. Our objective here is to determine the velocity with which the ball is launched from the spring gun. We use two basic laws to determine the velocity of the ball. We use law of conservation of energy and conservation of momentum to determine the velocity or the initial speed with which the ball is launched. Once the ball is launched, it embeds itself into the catcher and the ball catcher system rises to a height h in green is determined using law of conservation of energy. Initially, we have kinetic energy, half and v squared, which is converted to potential energy, which is mgh. By solving that formula, you will notice that the velocity capital V in green, which represents the initial velocity of the pendulum when the ball that embeds itself into the catcher is given by the formula square root of 2 g h, where h represents the maximum height of the function. And applying the law of conservation of momentum that says m times the velocity of the ball should equal m plus n times the velocity of the mass, the ball catcher system. We can solve for the velocity of the spring gun using the formula BB equals N plus N capital B over N. The measurements that we make in this part of the experiment are the angle of deflection of the pendulum, the length of the pendulum using a meter stick, Hold the meter stick 
perpendicular to the platform and measure from the point of suspension to the center of the catcher. We need two more quantities. That is the mass of the ball and the mass of the catcher. In order to weigh the mass of the ball and mass of the catcher, we are going to now use the triple beam balance. Place the weight at the center of the scale. We can move the measuring weights on the scale until we reach a balance. First, perform the jigsaw motion. We launch the ball from the spring gun. We measure the height and the horizontal range. And we were able to estimate, using kinematics, the velocity of the ball being launched. We then perform this experiment, where we measure the angle of inflection of the pendulum, the length of the pendulum, the mass of the ball, and mass of the catcher. We then use the law of conservation of energy to estimate the initial kinetic energy of the catcher. We use that to determine the velocity of the ball catcher system. Once the ball was embedded into the catcher, we then use law of conservation of momentum to estimate the velocity of the ball being launched from the spring gun. Since the two spring guns are identical, you should on the ballpark get exactly the same values of the speed of the launch of the ball in both the cases. This will validate both the loss of conservation of momentum and the loss of predictability.